Okay, so the process now. We know that the DNA has segments which needs to be copied, and we know that it is like Z, like Y, and like A. These are the codes that actually produces enzymes which can break lactose. So when lactose is present in food, then it activates the production of an mRNA which goes to the ribosome which produces an enzyme. Okay. So before this needs to be copied, we know that the DNA needs to be split or separated and then the copying occurs. And we also know in during transcription, only one strand is copied, and in this case, it's the upper strand, which runs from 5' end to 3' end in this direction, so that it can copy the codes this way at a stretch. Okay? So here, this is uh, in order for the um, Production of mRNA, we know that RNA polymerase is required. So, this RNA polymerase is already here. Let's say it's fixed on this, these three blue genes. These are not the blue genes with five pockets in it. We are talking about GNES genes. Okay, three genes known as promoter okay. on the promoter there is an enzyme here which is called a repressor and the pink ones here are called your operator and uh, <coughs> here we find Repressor is on the operator and on the promoter we find RNA polymerase. Okay, so this is the normal condition. When lactose is not present, this is the present condition. Okay, it's a normal condition. Let's just discuss what each of these do. Promoter, it is the binding site for RNA polymerase. I'm just going to draw it here. It is the binding site for RNA polymerase so that it can produce mRNA. Operator, it is the negative regulatory site. This is the one which actually regulates, regulates production of enzymes. Then repressor, it is a protein, it's an enzyme. It's not a DNA code, it's not a nucleotide, it's an enzyme which attaches to the operator. Here is the operator, okay? it is fixed on the operator and it blocks transcription. It prevents the formation of mRNA and enzymes to break lactose. Okay? Enzymes to break lactose comes from this mRNA, but in case where there is lactose in the food, then this is what happens. <clears throat> the lactose, when it is present in the food, some of the lactose is converted to allo-lactose. This allo-lactose is also known as the, uh, what do you call it? Well, let's, let's just say allolactose fixes on to the repressor. This is the repressor. This is the operator. This is the promoter. This green structure is your RNA polymerase. This is the one that actually produces mRNA. But at this point, 
when this <coughs> repressor is uh, here, when the repressor is here, RNA polymerase cannot produce an mRNA. It cannot copy this segment. But in the presence of lactose and some of the lactose which has been a little modified in order to fit into this structure, when it fixes it itself on the repressor, the binding site on the repressor, it changes the shape of the repressor. Okay? It has this kind of shape. Now suddenly it is like this. So this shape does not fit in to be operated and it comes out. When it comes out, the RNA polymerase can now move forward and it does and then copies the genes like Z, like Y, like A to form this mRNA. This mRNA goes and produces the enzymes required for the breakdown of lactose. Okay, and finally, you get the energy required by a bacteria. And when this is all used up, when this, uh, since the lactose is fixed to the repressor, and the repressor has, I mean, the shape of the repressor has been changed, therefore it cannot fix itself. But when all the lactose are broken down, and finally this is also broken down, it changes back to its original shape. And this falls back again here. And you know, it fixes itself on the operator, now blocking the further copying of this, uh, these codes. So this is the way in which the promoter, operator, repressor controls the copying of the codes that make up the enzyme to break down lactose. So this is what lac operon is all about.